I tested my hearing. You can too. Firstly, I'd say that skills in production and enjoyment of audio are the product of learning and experience, much more than the quality of your hearing. Clearly, there are some hearing issues that really will be problematic, but I believe that anyone with reasonably healthy ears can learn production skills, and I believe that anyone, almost anyone, can enjoy music. But some things in life are good to know. This is why you go to your doctor for a checkup every now and then. And I'd be surprised if more than a tiny percentage of my viewers have never visited an optician. But how many have had their hearing tested? It's a bit of a saying that most people have their hearing tested 10 years after they needed to. <laughs> I've had my hearing tested a few times, but I'm yet to summon up the courage to visit a proper audiologist. I'm not frightened of the test, nor am I too worried to learn the results. It's fighting off the salesperson on the way out who really, really wants their commission today. So what tests have I had done? Well, it's easy to check out frequency response. Play a few sine waves and see what's the highest frequency you can hear. Unless you're listening on the proverbial eBay earbuds, you can't go far wrong. Just bear in mind that it's informal. But even being informal, you'll learn something you didn't know before. You can find sine wave generators and downloads on the web. It isn't so easy to test low frequency response because you could play, say, 20 hertz, and think that you heard it. But what you actually heard were 40 hertz, 60 hertz, 80 hertz, etc. Harmonics generated by your headphones and speakers as distortion. And the 20 hertz fundamental was totally absent. <laughs> so we won't bother with that. Another test I had was by telephone. That might sound odd, but there's a test conducted by the Royal National Institute for Deaf People in the UK. RNID. I'll put a link in the description. The way this test works is to play speech against background noise. The speech varies in level, and as digits are read out, you have to tap them into your phone. As the speech gets quieter and quieter, it gets lost among the noise. People with good hearing will hear more digits. People with degraded hearing will hear fewer. You'll get a brief summary report at the end, and if necessary, advice to see an audiologist. Another test I had, I can't remember where I had it, but it seemed fairly official. Another test played sine wave beeps, random frequencies at random levels at random intervals. All I had to do was identify when I heard something. Not an expert, but I prefer this test. In the phone test, I was often making my best guess, where well, you can't guess in the beep test. Well, you can, but if you guess at the wrong time, you just imagine the beep. <laughs> that wouldn't matter, though. The test is assessed on what you can hear. I don't remember the results. But there's a new test in town. And like the phone test, you can take it too. And it's free. The app is called Mimi, M-I-M-I, -M -I, which I presume stands for something, but I couldn't find out. It's available for iPhone and Android, and it's free to download. Again, I've put a link in the description, but you can find it through your app store. The way this test works is to play sequences, each of several beeps, varying in frequency and level. The level fades in, then fades out. You hold down a button while you're hearing the beeps and let it go when you can't hear anything. Now, it has to be said that this test will work best with calibrated headphones. The selection includes Apple EarPods and AirPods and AirPods Pro and Sennheiser HDA 200 and HDA 300. That seems to be it for now, unfortunately. I can see the problem here that there are just so many makes and models of headphones. Fortunately, there's an unsupported headphones mode, though of course the results won't be so accurate. Or perhaps not accurate at all. The way the app works is first it asks you to find a quiet place and it checks the noise level. Then you'll set your headphone volume to halfway and no, the app won't let you cheat. <laughs> Next, a practice round where you'll hear sequences of beeps and you hold down the button while you hear them. Then off you go, first the left ear, then the right. Finally, you get your results. If there's a problem with this test, and of course, I'm not qualified, so you can't take anything I say seriously, the problem is that I could easily press and hold the button when I heard when a beep sequence started, but I was guessing somewhat exactly when it faded out into silence. Silence for me, of course. And of course, the main issue is that I wasn't using calibrated headphones. So, to be honest, the results are probably little more than a guess. What I did learn, however, is that my ears are different. Well, I knew that anyway, and I have a simple informal test for that, which I may present in a future video. 
But if I had been using calibrated headphones and the results were accurate, what I would have learned is my hearing number. Betty. Your hearing number represents how loud speech needs to be for you to hear it. How well you can communicate with others depends on your hearing number and other factors, such as your listening environment, how familiar you are with the speaker, your brain's ability to make sense of the sounds you're hearing. So the hearing number ranges from zero to 100, and I have some bad news for you. Zero is good, and I would imagine represents no hearing loss. Nine is still good, but we're some way from 100, which is bad, the worst. Joining a few dots together, it seems that the hearing number is calibrated in decibels. So between zero and nine, everything's fine. From 10 onwards, then you're going to need an over-the-counter hearing aid. You can just find it and buy it. No consultation necessary. Though, of course, different countries may have different rules. From 25 onwards, it's a whole new game and you're going to need a prescription hearing aid. How bad can it get? A hearing number of 60 plus means you'll need a cochlear implant. Scary. As I've said, I know nothing. But it seems to me that out of 100, only the range of 1 to 9 is normal. And for everything else, you'll need a hearing aid. It kind of makes me feel as though 9% of the population can hear just fine and 91% need a hearing aid. I know that's not right, but I do get the feeling that they want us to worry. What I do know, however, is that whatever my number, I can go through all of my everyday life and everyday needs professionally and personally without feeling the need for a hearing aid. Yet. When I need one, I'll get one. Well, maybe 10 years after I need one. Mimi goes further. I'll be quick with this and say that with the full Mimi experience, which of course isn't likely to be free, you'll take the hearing test, then your Mimi-enabled software or device will enhance the audio to compensate for whatever hearing loss you have. So you'll hear audio as it was meant to be heard, not muffled and messed up by whatever state your hearing is in. That's the idea anyway. I'd have to be sceptical whether this really can work, but suppose it can. If this technology really can work, I can see it being a great help to music producers who can balance their recordings, mixes and masters, securing the knowledge that what they hear via Mimi is how their work actually sounds, not how it sounds through their own degraded hearing. There's a slight fly in the ointment here that they're balancing their work for people with excellent hearing, where the majority of their listeners are probably degraded to some extent. Given that you only have to be a 10 on the hearing number scale to need a hearing aid. But also, in the land of home televisual entertainment, there's the perennial problem of the dialogue not being audible. Of course, any older person with degraded hearing could imagine that it's their own fault. But it seems that the subtitles on mode is favoured by young people more than any other age group. But suppose that Mimi, in your Mimi enabled TV, can make dialogue more intelligible, not forcing it out, but tuning it to your ears. Well, I can see that being very popular. So this is all I have for now. I suspect I've touched on topics here that will need further investigation. So my question to you today is what would you like to see me cover related to hearing? Remember that I'm not an expert and you can't rely on what I say. But hey, everything's open for discussion in the comments. Oh, and did you take any of the tests I mentioned? How did you get on? See you soon. I don't think that chart he showed was his own hearing. He's probably afraid he'll get thrown out of Audiophiles Anonymous. Ha 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 